All right, hello. Let's talk about um, basics for setting up a workspace and um, basics for cutting paper, mostly just straight lines, just like the general how-to of just getting paper to separate in a clean uh, edge. So how you set up your workspace, first of all, is you need to make sure that everything that you will, all your materials and equipment that you need to work with are around you, close at hand, that you're always cutting your paper on um, a self healing cutting mat or something to that effect so that you're not cutting just into furniture. Um, that your X-Acto knife is not in a position where you, if you're not using it, you can bump into it. And cut yourself um, definitely make sure you're not like burying it under scraps and other materials because it's not fun to find your knife that way and then get yourself some kind of throwaway container you can keep the lid on and cut a little hole in the top or you can keep the lid off and um, just fill it with blades but for your sharps because you will be changing your blade all the time and you don't want to just keep blades around um, discarded blades around while you're working for the same reason that you want to keep your knife uh, out of view so I change my blade constantly this is a summer's worth of blades just from working this summer um, anytime you're you feel your knife giving you resistance is when you want to change your blade so that's usually within about five minutes unfortunately paper dulls blades so it's um, it's, it's kind of a catch-22 situation where you have to use the blades to cut the paper, but then the paper dulls the blades. So you're constantly changing your blades. It's not worth sharpening them. Um, just they're very, very, very inexpensive. Um, so just get a bulk quality, quantity so that you can um, keep them. Uh, keep Just keep refreshing your blades. Um, okay, so you have a cutting mat with a grid on it. So just general cutting straight lines um, and measuring. If you are cutting a straight line that is uh, parallel to the edge of your paper, all you have to do is line your paper up with the edges of the paper um, going along the grid lines on your, on your cutting mat. And you can use that as a guide to uh, line up your ruler. Um, to make a straight cut. So if you need to measure a specific, these um, these grid lines on mine are about half an inch. So I know that this is an inch and a half because there's three squares. Um, the way that you um, can see the measurements on a ruler is there's the inch which is the numbered lines, the numbered sections. This right here in the middle is half an inch. It's pretty, pretty easy to understand. Um, and then if right in the middle of the half are lines that are quarters of an inch. And then beyond that is eighth of an inch. Um, in between the, the quarter of an inch lines. And then in between those are these marks, they're sixteenth of an inch lines just drawing all over my ruler. So um, you will probably only have to worry about half inch, quarter inch, and maybe eighth inch, and then of course full inches. Um, but it's good to know how to read your ruler. So I want an inch and I want an inch and a half of material to cut. So I'm measuring just to make sure. I can see it's not completely square because I'm not lined up. So I'm changing that. Um, you always want to make sure that all of your measurements are checked out before you do any cutting because you can't add material later, um, but you can always uh, keep refining your measurements. So 
measure twice, cut once. It's a cliche, but it is true. So I'm standing while I cut so I can apply the maximum amount of pressure on my paper. Um, you lose a lot of that influence uh, over your material when you sit down. You're not able to really press down hard enough. And with Bristol board, you really need to apply more pressure. If you find that you're not cutting through, I'll do another cut and deliberately not cut through. If you find that you're not cutting through your material and you can't separate it, you want to kind of make sure that if whether or not you can separate it before you, you move your ruler out of the way, you can go back over that cut. So if you are finding that you're not getting it all in one cut, that's okay. Um, just don't try to force it because that will just rip the paper. Um, okay, so we're going to do a shape now. We've got some strips cut. A um, couple of rules of thumb for shape cutting. You do not want to do what I did a couple days ago and cut from the center of the paper because then I lose all of this material as useful scrap. So if you keep all of your shapes, all your cuts to the edges, A, like I wouldn't have had to cut two of these sides because they could have just been a corner, and B, um, I'm able to use the scrap, more scrap around it. And um, because you're supplying your own materials, maybe that's more of an incentive to keep your scrap in line. You'll notice I constantly move things around as I'm working because um, I want to make sure nothing is in my way when I'm trying to work. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to cut is a triangle. This is going to be the template for my next demo. Um, I want it to have three inch sides. So I'm just making marking a little tick there. You can't really see my marks, unfortunately, on these demos, but you can trust me. Um, if you want, you could count boxes. I don't usually do that. I tend to use the ruler for things like this. Um, make sure your corner is lined up with the corner of the lines. I could use the smaller ruler for this. It might be more practical. And then I line up these marks here. And I don't put a lot of pressure on my pencil when, I, when I'm marking something out so that I can erase it later because I'm going to use a smaller ruler to cut. Um, because if I put a lot of pressure, uh, I can see the lines, but then that leaves a shadow when I go to erase it. So. Um, I often use the, the knife blade to move things around. Um, okay, so this is separated and it's going to be my template for my next piece. I want to get rid of this pencil line, so I'm erasing that now. Um, last thing, I'm going to have to change my blade for the next demo, so I'm going to do that now. So what you do is you want to unscrew the bottom even if your X-Acto knife looks different from mine, it's likely going to be working exactly the same. Um, there's an element either at the bottom, sometimes it's up at the top, but usually 90% of the time it's down at the bottom. You unscrew it a little bit, you don't have to take it all the way off, just to loosen it up and then you kind of push it against that and that will release this part with the X that you can see. Um, Take my blade, throw it in the sharps, grab a new blade, and I fit that into the X. And then I hold the back of the blade. Some knives have like a collar that you can grab onto so you don't have to hold the blade at all. But I hold the back of the blade to stabilize it so it doesn't spin around and cut me. Um, and then tighten this as best as I can so that the blade doesn't fall out while I'm working. And that is the basics of cutting and arranging your space.